Before we start writing Angular applications, I want to highlight the mental model that you need to have in order to build Angular applications. This really depends on the background that you have with front-end web development. The way you think about front-end applications might be very, very different depending on what you've been doing. The traditional approach of uh, front-end web development involves a couple of things. First, you write your HTML, which is the static portion of your application. And then you write your JavaScript, which is the dynamic portion of the application. And the JavaScript is kind of embedded into your HTML. So when the HTML loads, JavaScript also gets loaded. And the JavaScript gets to manipulate the DOM, the do document object model tree. And uh, you achieve dynamic functionality, like responding to user operations on the page. This is traditionally what we've been doing for a while. If you're using some kind of a framework like jQuery or such, uh, this is what you do. Right? You write your HTML separately and you write your JavaScript separately. So there is this implicit divide between these two things that you do in your application. Yeah, any application, no matter how complex it is, if you're following this approach, you have the HTML side of things you know, and the JavaScript side of things. Let's take an example. Let's say I want to have a, a current, you know, I want to have an app which shows the current date and time, right? Just whatever is the time when the page loads, I just want to display it. And I'm creating an application for this. How would you typically approach this in a traditional paradigm? You have your HTML, you have your JavaScript file. In your HTML, you add a div or a paragraph, which is where the time needs to be displayed in the web page. And then in your JavaScript side, you write your JavaScript code to get the date and time. And then well, you get the, the paragraph DOM element, which you've added over here, this step. And then you update the value based on whatever date and time you've got. Right? So this is how it does broken down. You have a single element, a single piece of functionality where you have some, some code in the HTML side of things and some code in the JavaScript side of things. Now, let's say you have to add a button which uh, kind of refreshes the page or prints something to the console. Well, how does that work? Okay. You first add your button on the HTML side, then you move to the JavaScript side of things, and then you add the function to handle the button click. Right? So this is how you approach things. You have this uh, implicit divide, like I said. With Angular applications, you do not have this implicit divide, at least in the mental model. You don't have to think about, OK, when I'm creating something, OK, what is the HTML side that I have to do? What's the JavaScript side that I have to do? Well, you don't think of it that way. What you think about is components. Angular has a component-based approach to developing web applications. And you, as an Angular developer, are going to be thinking components. You're not going to be thinking, what's the HTML code you need to add? What's the JavaScript code you need to add? The very first thing that you need to think about when building an application is, what are the components that I need to build? What are the components that I need to design, create, build, and put together so that you have an application? But what do I mean by the component-based approach here? So let me give you an example. Let's take a typical web page. You have uh, a bunch of elements uh, that you find in most web pages. So let's say you have a header, you have a body, the main area, and you have a sidebar and a footer. These are common elements that you find in any web page. Well, you might be working on an app which does not have this, but just go with me here. Let's say you're building something like this. The component-based approach involves trying to figure out what are the different portions in this experience, in this application, that you can separate out and create components out of. So here, these individual sections can be created as components. You can have a header component, you can have a sidebar component, a main area component, and a footer component, right? Assuming that you could break your application down, how would you break it down as a question? And these individual elements, UI elements in your application, typically stand out and you break that down. So let's take an example of a header, right? You create a header component now that you've broken it down and you identify that that's an element that you need to create, right? Similarly, there is a main section or a body section where you create a body component for it. You have a sidebar section, you create a sidebar component and so on, right? So every significant portion of real estate on your page, which can be self-sufficient, which knows what to do with that area can be split and created as a component, right? So this is how you approach an Angular application development, right? You start thinking in terms of components. What are the components that I can create?
Now, what does creating a component entail? Let's say I have this header as an example, right? I have decided that I want to create a header component. What does this mean? This means that I am going to create this entity which contains HTML and JavaScript together in it, right? So this is a self-sufficient piece of web application that can be plugged in somewhere else and that knows what to do. You know, the header component knows how to render the header. The body component knows how to render the body. And when I say how to render the body, it also includes what happens when the user clicks on the body, right? Where some element in the body uh, could be clickable and the user clicks on it, but the body component knows what to do with that. So you're basically breaking down that real estate, the page real estate into components where each component knows how to render itself and knows how to deal with user interactions for that component. All right, now this header needs to be used somewhere. Once you've created a header, you need to use it. How do you use it? Well, you use it by creating an HTML tag for it. So every component can be assigned a tag uh, or a selector, which is basically how somebody else can use the component, right? So component in isolation doesn't mean anything. It has to be used, it has to be put on the page so that it renders at a particular place. So the way to do that is to assign, when you're creating a component, assign a name to that component, right? Assign a selector. That selector is what a consumer can use to call and render that component. So let's say I have the selector called header section. This selector can be used as a tag in any HTML in your Angular code. And now when somebody uses this tag, the header is rendered, right? There you go. So this is how you provide a component that can be used by somebody else. Once you've created a bunch of these components, well, each one of these can have a name or a selector. You give a name for these components. You register these components with a name. Now, what do I mean by registering them? Well, you basically have to tell Angular that you've created these components and you've given it a name. You say, hey, Angular, I have a header section component and it goes by the name header dash section. Hey, Angular, I have a main section component which goes by the name main dash section. So, right, you're telling Angular that you've created these components and you've given it a name. Now that you've done this, in your Angular application, you can now use those selectors and then Angular is going to pull the component that you've told it for those corresponding names and then it's gonna render them, it's gonna present them to the UI, all right? So this is the component-based model which is very different from the way we traditionally think about front-end development. You're not thinking HTML and JavaScript, but you're thinking components, you're thinking units of UI that you register to Angular and then use in multiple places. The thing to remember though is that these components could have subcomponents. For instance, here you have like a main section or a body section. Well, guess what? The body section could have sections within it and those can be components as well. So now what you're looking at is kind of like a component tree. So we have a couple more sections, let's say info section or the details panel. You can create those as components as well. And then you use those components in the main section component. So you are looking at a component tree like this, all right? So you have the header component, the main component, which has two children, uh, summary and detail, the footer component. And you have a sidebar component. Let's say it has a couple of UI elements called, which is a nav bar and an update section or whatever, right? So you're kind of looking at it as a tree. Now, a tree needs a starting point, and that starting point is a root component. Every Angular application is gonna have a root component, which is going to hold the main components that needs to be displayed in the page. And then those components can have child components and so on, all right? So this is a structure of an Angular application. This is something for you to remember when you're building Angular applications, you need to think in terms of components. This might seem a little bit vague because we haven't looked at the code, but I want you to think about this as a model when you're building apps. And when you start looking at the code, this is all gonna fit in and you will understand how this whole picture works. Now, if I were to go back to this example that I gave earlier, right? So you need uh, something to show the time and then a button which does something, right? So rather than have the split as, okay, this is the HTML stuff that I need to do and this is the JavaScript stuff that I need to do, what you do instead is create a date component which shows the date and a click component which is the button and the click functionality that goes with it. And then you create this root component which is gonna render 
them both. Then you tell Angular to handle the root component and then all the child components from there on. Right? So this is how it works.